Hello, welcome to Real Mindful. This is where we speak mindfully about things that matter. We're here twice a month, introducing you to some of the teachers, thinkers, writers, and researchers who are engaged in the mindfulness movement. You'll hear all kinds of conversations here about the science of mindfulness, the practice of mindfulness, and the heart of it. I'm Stephanie Domet. I'm the managing editor at Mindful Magazine and Mindful.org, and this is Real Mindful. This is a time of year when many of us begin to turn our thoughts toward gratitude. As the calendar year dwindles, and here in the Northern Hemisphere the light does too, we might be inclined to turn inward, reflect on how and where we are, and let the feeling of gratitude infuse us. And you know, sometimes it doesn't come that easily. And that's what we're talking about on Real Mindful today. We're marking the launch of our first ever gratitude journal, which appeared on newsstands November 23rd. The journal is packed with personal essays, gratitude practices, and the latest science on how and why gratitude works. It's beautifully illustrated with lots of space for you to write and draw in response to the prompts that are tucked in every corner of it. Amber Tucker is a senior editor at Mindful and Mindful.org, and Paige Soller is our junior designer, and together they led the team that produced the Gratitude Journal, and the three of us met up recently to talk about the journal, the science of gratitude, and our own relationships with feeling grateful. I hope you enjoy this conversation as much as we did. Well, hello both of you, and welcome to Real Mindful. Hello. Hey, I'm so glad to have you here. It's such a strange thing for us to, it's not strange for us to be together on Zoom, but it is a little strange for us to be together on the podcast. Um, But I'm really glad that it's happening uh, and that we have this way to celebrate our work in the Gratitude Journal. So thank you for agreeing to this kind of bonkers idea. Thank you so much for hosting this. This is going to be fun. I'm excited. Paige, let me start with you. What went through your mind when you were asked to design a gratitude journal? Oh, boy. I mean, it's my true dream project, honestly. Um, Gratitude has been such a big part of my life forever. So to be asked to lead this project was like, I mean, it's over and I still can't believe that I get I got to work on it in the first place. Um, It's definitely the most page project I could ever do. Anyone who worked on it with me could tell you my excitement was like a lot. (laughs) What, What do you mean when you say gratitude has always been a big part of your life? I feel like it's interesting. I was having a conversation with someone the other day about how even in high school, I was always this optimistic like really cheery, happy person. Uh, And in high school, people do not think that that's very cool Mm. uh, to be like super happy all the time. (laughs) And I, I didn't know the words for like what I was feeling, which was gratitude, like most of the time, like all of my teachers who taught me so much and the friendships I was having, I was just so grateful constantly but didn't really know what what those words were um, until I graduated and people gave me some words. I did a couple gratitude journals of my own, um, different like reflect on your on your daily life once a day, and really just any time that I felt sad or lost. I feel like I've always come back to gratitude and how grateful I am for everything in my life. It like makes me emotional. (laughs) I love this intuitive sense of, of gratitude. That's been this, this theme in your life. And Amber, when we started to work on this journal on the editorial side, the, you know, we made the backbone of it, this long reported piece uh, by Misty Pratt on the science of gratitude. 
you know, the, the more sort of, you know, that language that, that Paige talks about, like bringing that, that stuff that can be instinctive for some people into something that's really rooted in research. Can you talk mm-hmm. about, you know, for you, why it was important to include the, the latest research into gratitude? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I, I will preface this by saying um, everything you said, Paige, is so beautiful. And I have often not been that way in my life. I've always had a strong negativity bias. And um, while I do feel gratitude, sometimes it's hard to really feel, feel it, you know, like to kind of let the joy of gratitude come out. So, mm, yeah. So I'm kind of coming at it from the other direction. And I do find the science really intriguing because, um, especially in the past couple of decades or so, there's been a, a lot of, of really exciting research that's that's come out looking at kind of like the nuts and bolts of the science of gratitude. So, um, you know, and that includes the benefits it has for the person who is cultivating gratitude and then the person who is receiving expressions of gratitude. And then even um, kind of incredibly how that gratitude ripples out to the level of like families and communities. Um, So, and this is like serious stuff, like peer reviewed research in psychology and like business ethics journals and communications journals. So it's kind of like starting to, the word is starting to get out there. Um, And, you know, we, we, we already recognize gratitude and appreciation as these virtues and, you know, we often think of the practice of maybe like counting your blessings or making a list of things you're grateful for. And those are kind of like the traditional forms we might already know. But um, but now there's also this firm science supporting a wide variety of gratitude practices. Um, so, so when Misty went in and explored all of this really interesting research um, that runs throughout the journal, you know, we really wanted to make the goal to offer readers this kind of science-based and heart-centered look at gratitude and all the beneficial ways that we can practice it. And Amber, what stands out to you about the current research on gratitude? I think to me, um, it's my favorite thing is the way that the research points to um, gratitude, helping us to move beyond more individualistic ways of thinking about ourselves toward seeing how all of us are really connected. Um, so there's this great quote um, from the psychologist Georg Simmel, um, who calls gratitude the moral memory of mankind mm. um, or humankind. And so, <laughs> so, you know, that makes me think about how wisdom traditions from all over the world have taught that we, you know, we can benefit by gaining perspective and humility and patience and a greater capacity for kindness by recognizing that none of us would be where we are or would have what we have um, without all of the other people and ancestors and (laughs) societies and the natural world that supports life and and all these other things. Um, So in that sense, like everybody really is connected in this very literal way Um, and gratitude for that doesn't just help us to like get through a tough day or, um, you know, or remember to say thank you at the coffee shop, you know, it's, it's about seeing our bigger place and how we all belong to each other. Oh, so beautiful. Wow. So necessary. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so Paige, given that, that, you know, you were sort of handed this big task of like heart centered and rooted in science. How did you approach this from a design point of view? Oh man, I'm just like feeling <laughs> so much right now. Just, just hearing hearing you, Amber, just like really encapsulates so much of of like what makes me the most emotional about gratitude is that like connection of just like, yeah, I'm grateful for my apartment, but I'm like grateful for the earth existing. Like anyway. <laughs> It's just I know, it's huge. <laughs> it's a lot. Um, this big task, I approached it with so much help. Um, the whole time, I mean, the whole team supported me incredibly on this project, and I, I need to give a lot of love to that because I feel like there's no way I would have been able to to put as much as I did into it without that um, backing of my team. I'm really lucky to have 
Jessica is my art director who helped me like just she put so much trust in me and let me have so much fun just try new things uh and basically I'm I got to do I got to make it look exactly how I envisioned it Hmm. um so having the team's trust um both of you and the rest of the team helped so much like every time I presented a new element or an idea I had it was always met with such enthusiasm so it made the work a lot easier and I also care about this thing so much (laughs) it felt very personal to me um so I feel like my passion for the project definitely steered the ship and like got me through a couple late nights like Mm -hmm. just a couple yeah (laughs) it's cheesy but like honestly I just kept going back to how grateful I was to be working on the project. Like any time that I was like, oh my gosh, there is so much to do and deadlines. It was like, I am just so grateful that this is what I get to be stressed about. (laughs) What did you know for sure needed to be included in your design of this gratitude journal? Oh, I mean, I basically wanted it to include everything that I love. And it does. <laughs> uh, it's like photos of cute animals, illustrations, bright colors, fun shapes, some coloring, some hand lettering, um, which I think all sort of stems with. It all sort of stems from the fact that I I wanted to include a lot of hand drawn elements. Mm-hmm. I wanted I wanted the journal to look loose and like playful in hopes that it would look welcoming to draw people in. Like I wanted it to feel cozy. It's like sometimes when I start a new journal, like whether it's a notebook or like uh, a guided journal, I have a hard time because it looks like so clean and perfect and precise. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of wanted this to feel like someone had already made the first marks. So it would feel nice to jump into and add to like, didn't have to be afraid to like make a mistake or, you know, just like doodle on the page. Like I wanted it to feel like this is here for you. Yeah, that's marvelous. That idea of making it hospitable and making it a place where, uh, you know, someone can, can try things out, can try the gratitude on for size and see, see how it fits. Yeah. It's like, I wanted it to be like a a cozy, well-lived-in cabin instead of like a minimalist, modern apartment. (laughs) Like I wanted you to cottage core. Yeah, (laughs) completely of the moment. Yeah, (laughs) Uh, Amber. And then there are these like hospitable moments in the in the journal amid the the science reporting. There are also these kind of personal essays and personal takes on on gratitude. Can you talk a little about the kind of range of experiences and perspectives that those essays are offering? Yeah, I, I think that, you know, we, we approach this in such a, um, such a really integrated way, like the design and editorial um, teams on this project that I, it was like the editorial was supporting the design and the design was supporting the editorial. So that was really great. And I, I, that really comes through for me in the personal essays. Um, you know, we've, we've got, um, say, Michelle Maldonado, really awesome mindfulness teacher, talking about how you can adapt your self-care practices to sustain you in challenging times. Mm. Um, when someone else we talked to was Janae Johnson, um, who looks at how you know, practicing joy and making space for joy in your life is a part of recovering from personal or intergenerational trauma. Um, and Kelly, Kelly Barron uh, has this great essay about how she she did, didn't initially connect with gratitude very easily, kind of like me, <laughs> uh, as, a, as a daily experience, um, you know, and, and how she talked to a lot of people of different backgrounds and different experiences about how they practice gratitude. And, and, you know, she gets inspired to try adding to her toolbox of gratitude practices. Um, So the essays really want to run a wide range, but um, 
I feel like they all kind of share the message that, you know, wherever you are in your, your mindful gratitude practice, you, you don't need to kind of try to conform to a certain image of, of where you think you should be. You know, you can feel comfortable bringing your whole self to the practice with, with these people who are like really writing and speaking really honestly. Um, and with this really beautiful and kind vulnerability about, you know, where their journeys have taken them. I really love that wide lens on what gratitude practice can include and where you can start it from, which is, as you say, wherever you happen to be standing in this moment, having that that variety of kind of on-ramps to not just the practice, but these practices, this variety of ways to to engage with this, because I'm so struck in this conversation uh, just about, you know, Paige, your gratitude orientation and Amber, your gratitude orientation being so... Um, so opposite, but you're both speaking mm-hmm. about it with such like warmth and heart and vigor. And as you say, Amber, there isn't this need to sort of to conform to be a certain way before you begin this practice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Like it's it's really available and accessible to everyone, and we we really wanted that to come through, and not just you know this this isn't just. Uh, an exercise in forcing yourself to be more positive <laughs> uh, that, that can be, you know, at times um, just as unpleasant as, as feeling negative. Um, but it's, mm-hmm. it's really about kind of like exploring and, you know, trying little adventures and practices to find kind of, you know, where, where that gratitude seed starts to bloom for you. Um, and that's, that's not the same for everyone. And we wanted to honor that in here and, um, you know, all our, our writers and teachers did a really great job kind of helping us to reflect that. Yeah, the teachers are are offering sort of direct gratitude practices as well. So people can get, you know, practical on that level. Do you want to talk a little bit about the teachers who are represented and the kinds of practices that they've that they've brought to this journal? Oh, yeah. Um, this is where I wish I had my copy of the journal to look through. <laughs> um, but we had so much fun, um, you know, me and a few other members of the edit team just like pouring over so many different teachers and different practices for this project. And that was really fun. Uh, and also it was really hard to narrow down <laughs> <laughs> to, you know, the, the 15 practices that ended up being in the journal. Um, but, you know, we, we have uh, some teachers who may be familiar to a lot of readers, um, you know, people who've also written a lot of books like um, Tara Brox or, and Sharon Salzberg, mm-hmm. um, who who kind of, they're big names in the mindfulness community. Um, we also have some really fantastic gems of teachers who, you know, we've been working with for years here at Mindful. Um, you know, people like Shalini Ball Milne, who has this beautiful practice for um, reflecting on all the different roles that people play in your community and, and sending out gratitude to how everybody, everybody together keeps the community going and takes care of each other. Um, and we've, we've got one from Shelly Tegelski, who has a, a lovely practice for um, kind of cultivating a sense of gratitude throughout your whole body. So we often think of gratitude as kind of feeling it maybe in the heart, but she, you know, helps us to relax enough to feel it in our whole body. Um, and Gillian Bell shares a practice, I believe, who that is, it kind of, kind of looks at, at the same kind of um, goal from a, from a slightly different, she takes a slightly different way about it, but two really beautiful embodied gratitude practices. Um, and Elaine Smokler talks about, you know, using all your five senses to help you tune into the world around you and really like notice those little things that, that you might overlook that you can feel gratitude for, um, you know, waking up in the morning and seeing the sun peek through your curtain and, you know, smelling the coffee downstairs, you know, feeling a soft blanket, you know, all of just all these little tiny moments of gratitude that are just kind of waiting for you to notice them. Um, and oh, yeah, there are just so many and they're all so good. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Paige, the other sort of major character in this gratitude journal is 
the illustrator and and their beautiful illustrations. What do you want to say about the illustrator you worked with? Oh, she was uh, amazing. Like, I'm so glad that I got the chance to work with her, Geraldine. Um, I brought together 10 or so illustrators for the team to look at in the beginning, and everyone was drawn to her work immediately. Uh, so I'm really glad that she was up for the challenge. She nailed the feeling that I was imagining for each spread Um, because we have five different sections in the journal so with each I had a specific vision in mind of the body one is laying outside and just being in nature looking up at the sky there's flowers there's birds like the colors are beautiful the the feeling I get when I look at the illustrations it could not have gotten better. (laughs) (laughs) And then uh, one of the parts that I worked on was pulling in the writing prompts from writer and teacher Jane Ann Staw. And those are beautifully distributed throughout the journal Mm -hmm. um, with lots of space for folks to kind of explore uh, their own experience of gratitude. Paige, what was really important to you in working with the, the writing prompts? I really wanted to, I mean, they're all so different and so special. I'm, I'm really glad that we got the chance to, to work with her and get those from her. Um, I, I, again, with my thought of like, I wanted those prompt spaces to feel very organic and loose so that people wouldn't be afraid to make their mark. Um, they're just a big, wide open blank space. There's no lines. There's no guides. You can do whatever makes sense to you, whatever you feel, whether that's a doodle or writing a bunch of little bullet points or writing a little essay for yourself. Um, I really wanted it to be open to wherever you are, like Amber was talking about, like, you know, some people are further along in their practice than others. So I didn't want it to feel like, oh, you have to fill this space perfectly and there's 20 lines and this is all you have to work with. It's mm-hmm. like very like abstract, open-ended. Um, and a lot of those pages also include like, maybe there's a little coloring in the corner. So while you're thinking about this prompt and, how that makes you feel, you can do a little coloring, processing, thinking about it. Um, I wanted it to be like an experience, of mm. course. <laughs> mm-hmm. Amber, I'm curious about how or if your relationship with gratitude changed through working on this project. Hasn't changed at all. No. <laughs> 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 Um, What's that about you? (laughs) Yeah, no. Some people just never change, no. Um, I, well, I, I, you know, of course, like this whole project that we've been working on for at least a year, um, it's, it it has kind of sunk into my psyche, I think, in certain ways in that it's kind of become clearer to me how embedded mindfulness and gratitude are together like Mm. that they're they're really not two separate things to me anymore um like they're they're both just kind of facets of the same thing so like I kind of think of it like if you're willing to be truly present with yourself and with whatever and whoever is in front of you then in in a sense you are showing up with gratitude for this moment that you're in Mm. and you know, and I'm definitely not saying I can always feel the truth of that, like not by any stretch, but it's, it kind of, it kind of comes through for me, you know, at, at moments when I don't expect it to. Um, and sometimes it's, if I'm actually doing some kind of a mindfulness practice and I'm like, oh, I'm noticing gratitude there. Like, oh, cool. Like that's also present. Um, or, 
say like in Halifax yesterday here, we, we saw this really amazing double rainbow. (laughs) It just had, we were all like going nuts about it. And (laughs) it just happened to see it, um, out the window beside my desk at home. And I was just like in total awe. It was like, (sighs) wow, like the fact that this rainbow is like right here and it looks so close and I was just kind of speechless about it. Um, and I, I felt a lot of gratitude for, for that kind of moment. Um, so just these, just these places where, where gratitude is not expected and it's not forced and I'm not kind of compelling myself to feel it, um, but giving it the space to arise when you know, <laughs> when it, when it arises and not, <laughs> not trying to, you know, guilt myself into feeling gratitude or I guess, I guess what I'm trying to say is that I'm getting more comfortable with my own relationship with gratitude and that is helping it to expand. Oh mm-hmm. gosh. Well, who could ask for more than that? <laughs> 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 like that is the goal, right? Yeah. That's wonderful. Paige. <sighs> And what do you hope readers get from spending time with this gratitude journal? Man, the thought of people holding this makes me want to cry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just, I hope that they feel the love that we put into this thing. Um, I, that is the thing that I hope the most that when they hold it, they feel how much we care about it. Um, hoping they sit down with it it's like hugging a friend or seeing a cup of hot chocolate like all the visual metaphors for what gratitude feels like for me I like want that I tried to put that into this journal so that other people could could feel that too um I hope hope they use it to spend some quality time getting to know themselves a bit more maybe uh I know a lot of people have a hard time with that sitting down and and facing some stuff and realizing oh this is what gratitude is um I hope it helps them become more aware of all of the little things in their life like the big double rainbow at the window (laughs) uh and how taking a moment to look at that and running outside and just staring it on and being grateful for the fact that it exists. Like that's not nothing. That's, that's a wonderful moment. That's beautiful. And I hope that more people are able to take a look at those things in their lives and appreciate them and, and feel grateful. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I have to say that I have preemptively sharpened my colored pencils. <laughs> Yay! And have brought in a stack of wood and lots of kindling for the wood stove. And I have my hot chocolate mug ready to receive my customary afternoon hot chocolate. <laughs> and uh, and I think that for me is going to be like the perfect kind of full circle on working on this gratitude journal with all of you is to then sit down and work on it with myself. Yeah. That's, it's like the best part ever. It's like we get, we got to make this thing and now we get to use it and like (laughs) (laughs) experience it and like draw it and color it. And this one gets to be mine. Like it's amazing. (laughs) Exactly. And Steph, I think you should just expect me to show up with my gratitude journal and we can just like sit in front of that fire together. Maybe. Amber, I will set out a second mug. Paige, you're <laughs> Yes. <laughs> it's a gratitude party. Oh, there's no party like a gratitude party. That's how that saying goes, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you both so much for your work on this incredible journal and for joining me today in conversation. It's such a pleasure to talk to you this way. It was such a joy. Just just hearing you both speak about this thing that I also love so much and hearing other people that also worked on it and love it so much. Just, I hope that others love it as much as we do. <laughs> Do 
junior designer Paige Soller and senior editor Amber Tucker. You can find more about gratitude in the December issue of Mindful or, of course, at mindful.org. And you can find our brand new gratitude journal at a newsstand near you. You can also order it directly from us by going to mindful.org. And in fact, we're offering you, our podcast listener, a special deal. So you can get your gratitude journal from us at 30% off. Do that by heading over to mindful.org slash journal, place your order, and the discount will be applied automatically at the checkout. Listen, we would love to hear from you about it. You can email us at yourwords at mindful.org or tag us on social media. On Instagram, we're Mindful Magazine, Mindful Online on Twitter, or you can find us on Facebook or LinkedIn. And it would mean so much to us to see your photos or hear from you about how you use your gratitude journal. Here is something else we would feel grateful for. If you're inclined, a review of this podcast. You can leave a review wherever you find your favorite podcasts and your review can help other listeners decide whether they should take a chance on Real Mindful. We've also been celebrating gratitude on our 12-minute meditation podcast this month, so if you're keen to get started with some guided practices, you'll find several on 12-Minute Meditation. You can subscribe to that wherever fine podcasts are found. And we'll be back with another episode of Real Mindful in December. Till then, may your colored pencils be sharp, your chocolate be hot, your fire be cozy, and your gratitude be plentiful. Mm -hmm.